June 25th, Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible, 1 Chronicles chapter 17 and 18 from the Old Testament. When David had settled into his palace, he said to Nathan the prophet, Look, I am living in a palace made from cedar, while the ark of the Lord's covenant is under a tent. Nathan said to David, You should do whatever you have in mind, for God is with you. That night, God told Nathan the prophet, Go, tell my servant David, this is what the Lord says. You must not build me a house in which to live, for I have not lived in a house from the time I brought Israel up from Egypt to the present day. I have lived in a tent that has been in various places. Wherever I moved throughout Israel, I did not say to any of the leaders whom I appointed to care for my people Israel, Why have you not built me a house made from cedar? So now say this to my servant David. This is what the Lord who commands armies says. I took you from the pasture and from your work as a shepherd to make you a leader of my people Israel. I was with you wherever you went and I defeated all your enemies before you. Now I will make you as famous as the great men of the earth. I will establish a place for my people Israel and settle them there. They will live there and not be disturbed any more. Violent men will not oppress them again as they did in the beginning and during the time when I appointed judges to lead my people Israel. I will subdue all your enemies. I declare to you that the Lord will build a dynastic house for you. When the time comes for you to die, I will raise up your descendant, one of your own sons, to succeed you, and I will establish his kingdom. He will build me a house and I will make his dynasty permanent. I will become his father and he will become my son. I will never withhold my loyal love from him as I withheld it from the one who ruled before you. I will put him in permanent charge of my house and my kingdom. His dynasty will be permanent. Nathan told David all these words that were revealed to him. David went in, sat before the Lord and said, Who am I, O Lord God? And what is my family that you should have brought me to this point? And you did not stop there, O God. You have also spoken about the future of your servant's family. You have revealed to me what men long to know, O Lord God. What more can David say to you? You have honored your servant. You have given your servant special recognition. O Lord, for the sake of your servant and according to your will, you have done this great thing in order to reveal your greatness. O Lord, there is none like you. There is no God beside you. What we heard is true. And who is like your people, Israel, a unique nation in the earth? Their God went to claim a nation for himself. You made a name for yourself by doing great and awesome deeds when you drove out nations before your people, whom you had delivered from the Egyptian empire and its gods. You made Israel your very own nation for all time. You, O Lord, became their God. So now, O Lord, may the promise you made about your servant and his family become a permanent reality. Do as you promised, so it may become a reality and you may gain lasting fame. As people say, the Lord who commands armies is the God of Israel. David's dynasty will be established before you. For you, my God, have revealed to your servant that you will build a dynasty for him. That is why your servant has had the courage to pray to you. Now, O Lord, you are the true God. You have made this good promise to your servant. Now you are willing to bless your servant's dynasty so that it may stand permanently before you. For you, O Lord, have blessed it and it will be blessed from now on into the future. Later, David defeated the Philistines and subdued them. He took Gath and its surrounding towns away from the Philistines. He defeated the Moabites. The Moabites became David's subjects and brought tribute. David defeated King Hadad-Ezer of Zobah as far as Hamath when he went to extend his authority to the Euphrates River. David seized from him 1,000 chariots 7,000 charioteers and 20,000 infantrymen. David cut the hamstrings of all but a hundred of Hadad-Ezer's chariot horses. 
The Arameans of Damascus came to help King Hadad Ezer of Zobah, but David killed 22,000 of the Arameans. David placed garrisons in the territory of the Arameans of Damascus. The Arameans became David's subjects and brought tribute. The Lord protected David wherever he campaigned. David took the golden shields which Hadad Ezer's servants had carried and brought them to Jerusalem. From Tibhath and Kun, Hadad Ezer's cities, David took a great deal of bronze. Solomon used it to make the big bronze basin called the sea, the pillars, and other bronze items. When King Tu of Hamath heard that David had defeated the entire army of King Hadad Ezer of Zobah, he sent his son Hadoram to King David to extend his best wishes and to pronounce a blessing on him for his victory over Hadad Ezer, for two had been at war with Hadad Ezer. He also sent various items made of gold, silver, and bronze. King David dedicated these things to the Lord, along with the silver and gold which he had carried off from all the nations, including Edom, Moab, the Ammonites, the Philistines, and Amalek. Abisai, son of Zeruiah, killed 18,000 Edomites in the Valley of Salt. He placed garrisons in Edom, and all the Edomites became David's subjects. The Lord protected David wherever he campaigned. David reigned over all Israel. He guaranteed justice for all his people. Joab, son of Zeruiah, was commanding general of the army. Jehoshaphat, son of Ahilud, was secretary. Zadok, son of Ahitub, and Abimelech, son of Abiathar, were priests. Shavsha was a scribe. Benaiah, son of Jehoiada, supervised the Kerithites and Pelethites, and David's sons were the king's leading officials. God, I kept thinking when I was reading this passage, and this is not a new passage, obviously. We've read this before. But when David's talking about making a dynasty from him of his family and ultimately we know that leads to to jesus and what you were talking about where you said that you would put him in permanent charge of my house and my kingdom his dynasty will be permanent so we know that jesus comes through the davidic line but in david talking about uh, his excitement at this promise that you've made to him about his family and he even says that this is all about you god that he he wants this to happen and become a reality so that you can gain lasting fame as people say the lord who commands armies is the god of israel uh, david's dynasty will be established before you but in in listening to david talk about this about this work through his line his family line it just really started to gel together how little we mean here on earth and how important it is that we do your will that we carry out your wishes so that you gain the glory so that what we do is reflected in you and your grace and your mercy and your love that it is all about you we so easily get caught up in this world, we so easily get caught up in our kingdom that we make it all about us. Uh, and there was times when David didn't make it all about him and it caused great sin in his life and, and horrific consequences. But when we're doing your will, God, when we're not building the temple out of cedar because you've asked us not to, um, when we're not making it about our name and focusing on the fame having to do with who we are and the attention and the focus but instead we're turning it all back on you so that you can get all the glory so you can get all the praise because you deserve all of that for all that you've given us for all you've created for more importantly who you are that you reign sovereign over this entire universe god help us today to remember that that it is not about us. It's not about us in the slightest. We, our time here on earth is such a small, small, small blip on this huge, gigantic timeline and totality of a plan that you have 
that our lives, our drama for the day, um, our fights, our even our interest, our love interest, are such a small blip in that. But it's more important what we do with this life that it reflects your glory.